So it all started with my buddy Colin, and he had this old gaming computer that just wasn't cutting it anymore. And he asked me to build him something nice and fast. I was like, yeah, man. So that we did. But let me tell you a quick story first about why it took him eight months to get it. And then we'll go over the build, thermal testing, benchmarks, and in-game performance. So the problem. He was about to go on deployment for eight months. So I was like, I can still do the build and have it ready for you when you get back. This was back in August and we started messaging about it pretty much right away. But at the time, next generation components were about to release. So I suggested that we don't rush into anything and wait for the new stuff to drop. I would take a look at the benchmarks and tests that people did and make a decision from there. Meanwhile, we started with a cyberwood case like this, just a bare blank, boring cardboard like case what were we going to do to it we wanted to do something unique and different kind of a one of a kind build right so i hit up my buddies at salty burns and asked them if they could fractal burn and resin fill that case and they were like yeah man i could do that so here they are applying 10,000 volts of electricity to the wood yes 10,000 volts it was a lot of fun to watch the process. Then they mixed up a crystal blue resin just for us. And that was also something really cool to see the process. We took it home and sanded all the excess resin off the panels. Then we etched our company name into the side panel. After that, we cleaned all the panels up and applied a conditioner to prep the surfaces for a stain. And wow. It's already looking beautiful. But how would it look assembled and with a computer built inside of it? We weren't completely sure how it'd turn out, but had a pretty good idea it would look good. And here's the finished product. It's absolutely stunning. I think it's safe to say there's no computer out there like this one. Around 12 combined hours went into making sure everything was perfect, like a piece of art that it really is. And now he's coming home from an eight month deployment here in just a couple days. I'm just as excited as he is and can't wait to see the look on his face when he finally gets this computer. We went with an ASUS Tough 3090Ti to match the ASUS Z790i motherboard paired with a 13900KF cooled by a 240mm AIO with some Noctua fans that complement the wood color, 64 gigs of some super fast DDR5 RAM, and 6 terabytes of combined M.2 storage. Some of you may be thinking, will this 240mm radiator even keep a 13900KF cool? To help out, we paired this combo with the CPU frame and Cryonaut Extreme. If you aren't aware, the 12th and 13th generation Intel chips ILM causes a deflection on the lid of the CPU, which leads to the cooler not having an even surface to mate to. The CPU frame fixes that issue. The Bauer, J's Two Cents, Linus, Frame Chasers, many others have proven that delitting the CPU is ultimately the way to go. But in this case, we can't void the customer's warranty on the chip. If you do some research or have researched CPU frames, you will find they do a pretty good job compared to the factory ILM. Most important, there isn't any thermal throttling. So let's jump straight ahead into our thermal test and see. During the test, we installed the acrylic glass panel on the side. It was only removed for the video to reduce glare. The ambient temperature was a little on the warm side at 23.1 and got up to 23.5 degrees Celsius. Starting off with the idle temps, it settled at an amazing 33 degrees Celsius CPU and the GPU was chilling at 26.7 after about 5 minutes of rest. For Citibench R23, we scored a 40,313. Amazing score, most of the time it was in the high 80s and it maxed out at 93 Celsius. And during the run, our coolant temperature reached the maximum of 36 Celsius. Now for a night raid benchmark. This is a great 1080p test to give us a wider range of performance results. As we do not currently test a lot of games, this fills in most of the gaps. But since I mentioned it, expect to see more game tests in the near future. Red Dead Redemption 2 is the next on the list I would like to get as it also has an in-game benchmark. 
So we ended up deciding on these build specs because the 4090 was just too expensive and still is overall for the cost of this computer. I was able to catch a really good dip in the price on this 3090 Ti at the time and it made the most sense. As for the 13900KF, it scores just a hair better in R23 benchmarks than the 13900K and it was the only place we could save a little bit of money. So we sacrificed integrated graphics. Oh well, we don't need it anyways, and if any troubleshooting needs to be done, we have plenty of components to swap around to troubleshoot. Anyways, so the performance and temperatures during this test are awesome, really can't complain, and our final score is amazing as well. As for PC Mark, awesome performance and better yet, the CPU barely touched 70 degrees Celsius. The test basically opens up a bunch of apps and programs at the same time and really gives us a more practical performance result. So to answer the question, yes, a 240mm radiator will keep it cool, but don't expect to do any overclocking. The R23 benchmark ran on the borderline of thermal throttling, but it didn't. If our ambient temperatures was 20 versus 23.5 degrees, we would have seen a little lower temperatures, but the test is the most impractical of all. I don't know of any applications or games that would run a system that hard other than professional video and graphic rendering software. I'm pretty happy with the thermals here in cyberpunk, GPU staying in the mid 60s most of the time while pulling almost 400 watts and briefly surpassing 400 watts. But I'd like to run these tests again with better ambient temperatures to see how lower it could get. The CPU maintains high 60s and briefly touches 70, 71 a couple times. The last two results here are the same settings with ray tracing on and a 1080p run. Forza Horizon 5. This run is at 1440p with ray tracing off, all settings to max. Overall, we're seeing much better thermals here, but this is to be expected with lower CPU usage, GPU pulling less watts, and a little lower FPS than Cyberpunk. But for what it's worth, Cyberpunk is just a real power hunger game. These results are real nice with a super tight graph, no major dips or spikes and zero stutters. Next up we have the same settings but with ray tracing set to extreme. And lastly 1080p. I hope y'all enjoy the story about this computer and performance results. We'll get back to you when Colin returns and hopefully we'll grab some footage of him seeing this for the first time. I appreciate y'all watching and have a wonderful day.